Welcome to Outtake ESO. This is Sean. Uh, today's video, I'd just like to talk a little bit about what I kind of consider my my essential toolkit for teaching ESL, or the items I kind of need to kind of facilitate the job that I that I'm used to doing, or the professionalism I like to bring into the classroom. Uh, as you see here, I got them all kind of spread out on my tatami mat here. Now, and yeah, I do get the occasional Chinese visitor who says, "Do you sleep here?" And uh, I'm not. No, 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 I just kind of like to use them as a, as a throw rug uh, on my floors. But I got them all spread out here and I like to kind of go through with uh, through them with you. Some of them are not here, but just for, it's a little bit easier to leave them in their, in their location as it is. But uh, let's go through them. So the first thing I want to talk about is your basic school supplies and you know just like a student you're going to have to go out uh, before the school years or before your classes start and just kind of purchase a bunch of items that you're going to need to facilitate school, classwork, classwork. And uh, it's, it's important to keep in mind these are mostly going to be items that you're going to purchase when you arrive at whatever country you're teaching it. Uh, so you want to set aside some money for that. Uh, I would say you know, at least $100 US dollars for, for these items, if not a little bit more, maybe $150, uh, because you're going to need things like these. And let's just kind of go through what I consider essential items. I would say things like paper clips, definitely rubber bands. It's kind of cool in China here because you can uh, find a place uh, that just has bulk rubber bands. You just kind of go in there, you grab a bag, you grab handfuls, you put them in a bag, they weigh it, and you pay for it. It's actually quite cheap. Uh, you're going to want a pair of scissors, of course. Uh, I find these glue sticks here probably the best best answer for kind of just kind of a, an, an adhesive, uh, paper adhesive, because uh, it's not really a, a strong adhesive, but uh, it, it gets the job done and you can just kind of throw this in your, in your backpack. Uh, you're going to want a stapler, of course. Uh, important to get one that you can, uh, it's got a pivot that you can wall staple with. Of course, you're going to want to buy staples also. Pens, uh, highlighters, uh, markers. Now, you want to get the water-soluble ones. Now, in here, child, you also can just buy ink. Um, these, these screw off, and you, you can just kind of refill your, your markers. So uh, you probably want to buy a refilled ink also. Uh, you want to get yourself a red marker of some kind for marking and correcting. Pencils, I find it, I do most of my, my work in pencil because, uh, you know, you're constantly erasing, you're constantly changing plans, constantly uh, changing uh, thoughts. Uh, now, another thing is because the erasers on, on uh, pencils here in China are not very good, they disappear very quickly. Uh, you got to really buy these sort of extra um, detached uh, erasers also. If you want to get a pencil sharpener, I would suggest getting these sort of mobile ones or these sort of um, small, sort of pocket-sized ones. Uh, this is kind of really important here, uh, tape dispenser, tape and tape dispenser. Uh, because uh, a lot of times, especially here in China, they just show, they sell the rolls of tape, so people buy the roll of tape. And then they get in class and they're, they're spending like 10 minutes trying to scrape off the end of the tape or find the end of the tape and then scrape it and just pulling off little pieces and they can't quite <laughs> get the tape, uh, a piece of tape from the roll. So just go ahead and buy the dispenser and it saves you a lot of time. You can just pull a piece off and cut it and you know where the end of the, the tape is all the time. So keep that in mind. Uh, this was a useful advice that nobody told me about, <laughs> practical advice. Uh, you want to get yourself a ruler, these floppy rulers are awesome I find because I, I, I just kind of, I can keep this one with me forever. I can always throw this in my suitcase and lug it and take it to the next place. So I really like these floppy uh, rulers. And that's pretty, uh, a couple more, oh no, no a couple more. Get yourself some notebooks, I have these kind of plain notebooks you find here in China. Uh, you want to get a bunch of those. Uh, usually I get one for every class and then I can just take notes or every topic or something like that. Um, now I get these kind of portfolios also for classes. Uh, this one's great because it kind of has a zipper here. So what I do, I, I can just get flashcards and, and handouts and you know, so the attendance lists and everything. I can just kind of all put it in that 
and just label the portfolio for that class and just throw it in my backpack and uh, pull it out when that class commences. So these are really great uh, solution for organization for me at least. And definitely try and get yourself a, like a wall calendar or a desk calendar which can be kind of hard to find in China because you want one that gives you a lot of space to write in, you know. As a foreigner or starting a new job, you're, you're still going to, there's going to be a time period where you're not, you know, you're unsure about what your classes are for the day. And, and I always find a desk calendar is, is very helpful in that, but I got to be able, I need that space to write uh, under the day. So, or maybe a daily planner might work better for other people. But these are kind of the essential school supplies I would say you need to buy for uh, teaching uh, English uh, as a second language. And um, if you think of any, please do so. And any others that you, uh, that you find pretty commonly or essential to your schoolwork, uh, please let me know in the comments below. The next items I find essential are, are game pieces here. And what I mean by game pieces is you kind of want items that are going to facilitate a lot of different activities or a lot of different games. Um, so there's kind of some basic game pieces that you can buy that will do that, that will facilitate a lot of different sort of um, activities or, or gameplay in your classroom. Uh, one of these is cups. Uh, you can buy cups, you know, at the grocery store. They're pretty inexpensive. I like these solo plastic cups because they're very durable. But uh, if you can't find those, sometimes it's really hard to find these. Uh, if you can't find them, uh, you know, paper cuts will do. But you can do a lot of, you know, turn the cup over, cup up. Uh, you can do, you know, obstacle courses with cups. You can do all kinds of games with cups. So I would suggest you get a, get a grab a pack of cups uh, that first time you go to the market for your classroom. Another item that facilitates a lot of gameplay are these dice, and uh, I prefer these plastic dice, the, the smaller plastic uh, dies, um, and what I do is I find a, a container, a plastic container I can repurpose, and I put the dice in there, and then I can just kind of go around and hand this to a student when I want to, you know, get them to roll the dice. I can roll it and we can kind of both see the results. You know, sometimes we'll, you know, play games and try and hide it from you and stuff like that. But it's a lot better than having them, you know, this is not an item they're going to throw around the classroom. You know, for the most part, you have a lot more control with this kind of uh, approach than this one. But I don't, but I, I would recommend getting these for like the kids and stuff like that. They really enjoy these sort of plush uh, dyes. Uh, but the thing is that they, you know, they know, they understand that they can just kind of kick it around and throw it at people and stuff like that. And a lot of times they will, uh, you know, one student will roll the die and then another one will run up and kick it. Sometimes they'll just throw it at you and stuff like that. It gets really, these get really pretty annoying in, in the classroom just because of the understanding that it's not a very dangerous item. Uh, and then you also end up, you know, wasting a lot of time trying to chase it down, wasting a lot of time. Oh, he kicked it, so you got to roll it again now. Uh, just kind of kids misbehaving will misbehave more with an item like this. But it can be fun, you know. Uh, you know, it's all. It's also kind of. It's always kind of. It allows them a big visual cue and stuff like that. So it can be a lot more fun than than just this here, just because it's a lot easier to control. Control. Uh, other items, you want to get a sticky ball, uh, one or two. Uh, this is going to give you all kinds of board games, all kinds of target games you can play, and it gives you an accurate, accurate idea of what the result was. So sticky balls are great. Also get yourself like a soft Nerf ball, uh, like this one here. Uh, you want something like a tennis ball is going to be a little too hard, uh, cause a lot more damage, maybe a lot more injury. So these soft ones are pretty good for like passing games and things like that. Um, you might also want to consider something like a beach ball uh, if you want to like kind of have a bigger game or balloons even. You know, balloons are always good. You get a pack of balloons and, and you can always use those in a lot of the same capacity as as passing games or, uh, you know, volleyball games and things like that. This is something that I get that, that I don't see a lot of other teachers doing, uh, but I would strongly recommend getting one of these. And it's just kind of basic, your basic, you know, egg timer for the most part. And it goes up or it goes down. Let's say, uh, I want to do a couple seconds. Let's see. 
Uh, I gotta change around. I think it's my. This one does seconds and minutes. Reset. Let's say, you know, let's say one second, right? It gives you a nice kind of alarm. Nice audible cue. Uh, these are great for, you know, time, speed games, speed reading, things like that. Uh, also great for, you know, if you want to have a discussion for 10 minutes. All right, everybody, if you just give, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, then suddenly there's an audible cue that everybody knows kind of times up and you don't have to sort of try and uh, speak over the class. You have that alarm. So uh, I would definitely get one of these, you know, and they're only like, you can get them at a dollar store or you can get them online here in China for about 10 yuan or something like that. They're very inexpensive, but it will save you a lot of time just trying to get things organized. And it facilitates a lot of different sort of activities. Another, uh, you want to get pick, pick up a deck of cards, great for number games, great for guessing games, things like that. A uh, pack of cards will always come in handy. And here's a couple other items that I would, maybe not so essential, but uh, I think they're pretty good to have. They, they work in uh, a lot of very different facets uh, in activities and games. Uh, these mallets, these sort of Nerf mallets, or you can get inflatable ones too. These are great for kind of, you know, um, you know, flashcard games and things like that. You say the word and they have to hit the flashcard or the, or the picture. Uh, fly swatter games, uh, I use these for. Some teachers like to use them as kind of like a joke punishment thing. If the student is doing something wrong, they, they get the hammer. I call it the grammar hammer. I don't, yeah, I don't really do, I don't really use it in that capacity that much, but, uh, but uh, I do see a lot of teachers doing that. Uh, a Jenga game is always great. Uh, you can use it as, you know, the Jenga game proper, uh, but that's very time consuming. You might have like a question and answer game where they get the answer correct. They, uh, they can take a block off of it and the first one to knock it over, of course, gets the points or doesn't get the point. <laughs> the, the other team gets the points. Uh, but here you got blocks also, you know, and here's block games you can use such as like, uh, you know, who gets the, earns the most blocks and can build a house or who gets the longest line of blocks or you can do, you know, sentence um, structure with blocks also, those kinds of games. And the last game, uh, item here, this isn't essential, but I would say, you know, coin toss games are pretty, pretty, uh, are pretty common and, and you can use them to facilitate that in a lot of ways. Uh, I got this just because it's more visual. Uh, the Chinese coins, the yuan, are very small so people can't really see them and I got this because it's a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to, to see and it grabs a little more attention. I kind of call it the coin of uh, destiny, the coin of fate, or the coin of uh, death, you know. And you got very two distinct sides on it. Uh, I just kind of found it on Taobao. You can get them in tchotchke stores and things like that. It's basically a key ring uh, that I repurposed. And uh, you can use it for coin toss games or you can use it for spinning games. You kind of spin the coin and, and the less, uh, you know, when the coin stops spinning, the game is over and uh, uh, kind of like hot potato kind of game. But those are some essential, you know, game pieces I think that you should have with you uh, just as an ESL teacher or have at your disposal. Now, very often with, with places, they will uh, reimburse you, you know, with some items you might want to, you might want to propose to your manager and say, I'd like to buy this. Can you, you know, can the school buy it? And in that case, it would become the school's property. But, uh, you know, those arrangements are, always, are pretty common also, too. So if it's a question of, you know, not having the money or, or not feeling the need that to, to hold on to the item, you might want to approach your managers and say, hey, I'd like to do this in my classroom. And, and uh, you know, can the school can the school reimburse me for it? That happens pretty frequently. That's not uncommon. So it's also something you might want to think about. But uh, I like to have these items myself, just because I find myself using them uh, so frequently. Here's the backpack. Here I got kind of a bought kind of a cheap uh, backpack. I think this is a good thing to do. Uh, because then you can just kind of have your school backpack, you know. Um, of course, being a traveler, you're going overseas, you're gonna, probably going to have some kind of luggage or a backpack of your own or carry-all bag or something like that. But it's just so, it's just so frustrating and so time-consuming to move things from one to the next, and you're kind of putting a lot of wear and tear on, on maybe your good luggage that you're going to 
most likely be using it at a later point. Uh, it's easier for me, I think, just to go out and buy in a department store or on online one of these cheap um, backpacks and just kind of keep all of my school materials or class materials in that backpack. And uh, then I can just kind of grab that backpack every morning and uh, not have to worry about so much, oh, like, this is in here, this isn't in here, and, that, and so on and so forth. So I definitely suggest getting like a, a, you know, a dedicated backpack just for your schoolwork. important uh, item is a watch and I see this one's really neglected by a lot of uh, ESL teachers for whatever reason I know I, I don't really particularly like wearing a watch myself um, but uh, it's really necessary for a classroom a lot of times you'll you just kind of lose track of time and wonder where you are and you need that sort of quick sort of uh, response you need that quick you need that uh, the ability to assess that a lot quicker than than sort of uh, where's my iPhone? Oh, let me put you know, let me bring up the the screen and stuff like that. So uh, I would really suggest getting a, a watch. Uh, it's been a real uh, asset for me in the classroom, and and I would recommend it to any teacher. A necessary tool is an umbrella, and I would really recommend a like a compact umbrella that you can kind of throw into your backpack and just kind of forget about, but always know it's there. Um, you know, and inevitably as an ESL teacher, you're going to do a lot of walking, you're going to do a lot of walking in precipitation, uh, and you need you need something there to kind of keep you from getting soaked all the time. And, you know, often it's that one thing you kind of forget very often, so that's why I kind of recommend getting a compact one. I usually get one, throw one in my backpack, one on my e-bike, and uh, so I always know there's something there, or some, I have something available when it does rain. Okay, the next item is you, you probably want to get a laptop. I mean, you're definitely going to need a laptop. Uh, it's kind of an essential tool in every classroom these days because you're doing a lot on PowerPoint, doing a lot on uh, Microsoft, you're doing a lot of emailing, and you really kind of need your laptop to do all that to really sort of format or, or sort of address all that. Um, I'm, I've gone through a few uh, laptops at this point. Um, the issue of VPNs. Um, is it essential? You know, to be honest with you, I went the first probably five years in China without a VPN. It was only until these last few years that I started using VPNs. Uh, and I did that just kind of to respect the law. Uh, I don't make any waves, but uh, uh, I use it in VPN now. And, and is it essential? Well, it's essential if you want to load, you know, load videos up on YouTube, that's for certain. Uh, otherwise, uh, you probably want to get. Uh, I've used. I'm using my MacBook Pro now. Uh, that being said, you want to get a laptop and keep it in your residence. I would strongly recommend not bringing it back and forth to school every day, or trying to get yourself in, or trying to allow that situation where it's you're going to do that. You know, uh, try and use the school computers uh, when you go to school and use your laptop in your residence, but just because it's too much wear and tear. And that's, you know, that's a big ticket item, you know. Uh, if, a, if a MacBook Pro costs you about $2,000, you don't want to, the school's not going to reimburse you for that, you know. And uh, for the most part, they're, they're kind of, uh, uh, they're kind of reluctant to invest that kind of money in their own equipment, unfortunately. Um, so you want, uh, you want a good piece of equipment for your own purpose and, uh, I would suggest keeping it in your residence, uh, and then and to go with that, you, you know, uh, all the protection software that uh, that the school's internet uh, provides is is probably not that great. So uh, get yourself bring a laptop from from home uh, from your home country, and uh, keep it in your residence. Don't don't carry it back and forth uh, to school. Other, along with that, uh, I use a, an external hard drive here for all my storage, all my materials. This is a Seagate what, passbook, a uh, couple terabytes there. You want that as a backup, and it'll hold all your photos, all your documents, all that stuff. Along with that, you want to get some USBs for every job. 
that I start or every company I get a USB and that's all just that work specific uh, on there and uh, you know you want a, strong, a, long, a large storage there also 32 or 64 because it's just too much of a hassle to be like deleting stuff and trying to load stuff on you just want to have that quick access of just throwing stuff on there or taking it off. Uh, so it's definitely suggest to get yourself some kind of high capacity USBs. Alright, the next item I want to say is this is kind of one of my essentials. It might not be everybody's essential, but is a printer. And uh, I've gone through a couple printers here in China. Uh, always a very valuable tool because uh, especially if you get one with scanning it's very important you want that scan function or scan feature on your on your uh, on your printer this one has this one here has fax also and I've used that even I've even used that feature a couple of times so far uh, and definitely got to get a ream of paper also but anyway why is it why is it essential to me because First of all, that scan feature allows me to scan all, get a digital copy of all my important documents, my visa documents, and things like that. That's important to have on a USB and carry with that you carry with you at all times, because you never know when you're going to need those documents. And it's just a lot. It makes a lot, you know, sort of uh, a lot of transactions a lot quicker, a lot of sort of. Um, administration a lot quicker if you have those digital copies. Uh, other things about that scan feature is that um, what I like to do is I'll get say I have a textbook from a company and it has certain illustrations in it and certain characters. What I like to do is just kind of scan a copy of that textbook and then kind of use Photoshop and you know extract images and, and uh, illustrations and make uh, you know and make my handbooks or my handouts or have my handouts have that same continuity with those textbooks and I think that's great for the students so they don't, they're not looking at one picture of something and then looking at another picture saying like is that the same thing you know I, I like to have it just because it, it's kind of a, a waste of time you know, it's, it's, it's very inefficient to have oh what is this and is that the same thing I can't quite tell uh, but if they have that same illustration in both places say your flash you know your homemade flash card your homemade handout and then they have their textbook they're sort of making a quick easy connection and uh, the information is being processed a lot quicker so uh, I think it's very important for me to have that to, to, to do that uh, it's, it is time consuming but uh, I think it makes my classroom a lot more effective in the long run to, to, um, to have this piece of equipment uh, that can facilitate that next piece of equipment I want to talk about is this here, the laminator. Now this isn't really essential and you're going to have a hard time finding them in, in less urban environments. Uh, of course online these days you can get about just about anything so you can find them there. And they're fairly inexpensive. They're maybe 20 bucks, 20, 30 dollars for a laminator. Uh, yes they do cause problems every once in a while. Uh, you'll get a jam and that can be really kind of a headache. Uh, I learned how to kind of open it up and pull pull all the mess out of there and fix it but, uh, but I still think it's worth it you know just to be able to uh, just to be able to make your own flashcards and have that preservation you're kind of saving your money in the long run uh, and making your own flashcards the advantage there is like sometimes lessons don't have them sometimes um, you want two sets of flashcards and sometimes uh, you want to do your own thing. So uh, having those flashcards lets you make a very professional looking product, uh, something that the students can relate to quicker, and also uh, something that you can use again, you know, down the line. You can, you can uh, use it in different aspects also. Like for instance, I will do a, a full set of letters, a full set of numbers, or one to 10 or something like that. And I can always use those for many different aspects. They can also become game pieces. So uh, I like to have a, a laminator, and I've only started using these in the last, you know, three or four years. Along with that, you got to find laminates, and the A4 ones are the best. You can get a couple flashcards out of A4s. Uh, with a paper cutter. Uh, uh, along with the laminator and making your own flashcards and the printer, uh, I found this very useful tool, and that's the 
the paper cutter yeah you want to get a paper cutter and they're they're pretty cheap maybe 20 bucks 15 bucks something like that but uh, it gives you that kind of uh, it's a lot quicker than just using scissors and trying to cut like a million you know 20 little paper slips you know I can just kind of print it out and then just kind of chop them off you know and, and that really works a lot quicker and, and you kind of it's just you know it's just one of those things that makes life easier <laughs> just a convenience that makes life easier and if you've been doing this long enough you're looking for those those uh, those means and a paper cutter does that it gives your flashcards a much more professional look if they have that kind of straight cut that uniform straight cut and uh, Especially, there's so many paper slip games that you'll be using or paper slip activities that you want to use it for, and uh, it comes in handy there. So that's my, uh, my kind of my essential toolkit for the ESL classroom. Um, if there are any items, like I said earlier, uh, uh, if there's any items that I'm missing that you find essential, please let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to sort of compare our notes, see see what you find. Um, is there something I need that I'm missing here? Uh, if you kind of add it all up, all, all said and done, uh, what you're looking at, excluding the laptop, you're probably looking at $350 to even $500 if you throw in things like uh, the prices of USBs or external hard drives and printers. So uh, it can get quite costly. You know, that's, that's, that's a decent chunk of money out of an ESL salary. Um, so you're going to keep that in mind when you're planning and, and uh, you know, how much of what items can I bring with me, which items can I keep hold of and maybe take on to my next job, which items will I have for a longer duration. Uh, but there's certain, you know, there's a certain investment in, in tools and materials that you're going to have to make if you want to do ESL. And uh, these are what I consider the essentials. Um, but once again, if there's anything I'm missing here, please let me know in the comment section below and uh, I'll try and get back to you and uh, let you know uh, if I use that or if I don't use that or, um, or uh, my take on, on that item. Uh, maybe this is an idea I'm missing. I'm open to ideas here. You know, I don't get it right 100% of the time. <laughs> as, in, as, I, as I know for a fact, everybody is in, that same, <laughs> in the same shoes. But anyway, uh, so yeah, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'd really appreciate it if you click like and subscribe uh, for this video. And that really helps me out. I'm um, truly kind of trying to build this channel and provide sort of some insight into the ESL field. That, uh, that is, uh, it's a pretty field, a large field, uh, and there's a lot of opportunities there for people who are looking to uh, enter the field. So, hope it helps you out. Uh, but that's all for now. I uh, enjoyed talking to you. Thanks for watching. And this is our take ESL, and we will talk to you later.